Okay, more parts for the iron worker. What do we have here? This is the main linkage. Um, here is where I'm going to make those big holes for mounting the linkage. It's going to rotate about this, and this is what's pushing on the upper arm. And this geometry you're copying exactly from the other machine? Yep. Um, okay. It will require me to torch a little bit of the, uh, of the vertical linkage away on the corner so that there's not interference here so they don't hit because the one piece comes down like this and then the other one slides up and down here. So to make sure it doesn't, I'm going to have the torch away a little extra portion, but that's fine. How'd you get the pattern for this? You took it out from the other machine? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have um, them cut this exactly. Um, one of the metal stores I use, you can send them. I, I get the impression that a lot, of, a lot of metal suppliers you can do it with. But you just send them a CAD file or a drawing. This was just a drawing of what you want. And they program it into their, um, in their CNC torch, and they'll cut it exactly for you. you. Look, this is a beautiful cut. I mean, it's, let me get more lights on it. This is um, acetylene torch? Yeah, or some sort of torch. I don't know what kind of torch. It's not water jet. Wow, that is, and that's after grinding, or just that's how it comes um, The only thing I ground out. was these corners up here. Oh, wow. So that's pretty much a nice, clean cut. Yeah. And then this, I'm machining this down for the cylinder. What these are, I welded stops on because we have a, uh, a portable, I don't know what to call it, portable cold cut saw that you can hold and use, like the normal cold cut saw you use for cut and seal. But you can do that there. So my uncle volunteered to do that for me, cut this, because that looks like a really scary tool that's really easy to mess up and really hurt yourself. So he's going to do that for me. Cut I need to, um, It's really heavy. This weighs like... 110 pounds. Okay, I'm not going to lift it anymore. Because um, I'm going to need a machine away about an inch on each side, and that would take a really long time. So you just use the saw to cut off about three quarter inch, and then you only need a machine and a quarter on each side, and it's much easier. Mm -hmm. So you're going to cut off what here? Um, basically, just shave this down so it's only an inch and a sixteenth thick in the middle. Okay. So that's what I'm doing with that. Okay. Next. Uh, I guess. Jug bore. That's uh, our mill. Really big lathe. And uh, this is a jig bore. Oh, that's where my jacket is. I was looking for it. Um, so you can see I was torching this, but I broke the bit, so I gotta change out the bit and sharpen it. This is like the only really short bit we have. I need the short bit to go in the two inch holes. But basically, how it works wash out, ladies and gentlemen. It spins off center, and um, yeah. so you can, I don't know where my big allen is. Um, but you can adjust it precisely using this on the back side right here. Stick an allen in there and rotate it. This is in thousands. So you want to take one thousandth off, you move this half a half a half square, and it'll take up one thousand. But it's, you know, it, it's on the radius, so it's on the radius, so if you go, you know, one, it, one mark, it's making your hole two thousandths bigger. So that's that. And um, you can make all kinds of sizes of holes with this, depending on what sort of bar you have in here. You can put different stuff, like, I don't know where other Up to are. what size of hole? Um, as big as this, I mean, this is like four and a half inch diameter, you can go wider than that. Mm -hmm. So... What's Big. this machine used for? Is it used for cylinders and engines? Maybe. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know what we used it for in the past. I know we used it for making big holes. But I, you could use it on an engine, certainly. Mm -hmm. And this part, so describe this part here regarding the iron worker. Oh, this part is, um, this is what I call the main pin holder. And um, pretty simple part. It's just this shape. It's got to have this wide it's got to be wide at the top there so it can prevent the main arm from kind of flexing back and forth with mm -hmm. the forces and these the two inch pins are going in here and then another bushing is going to be free fit in there that's mm -hmm. that okay so you you wanted to do it out of two pieces of one what one and a quarter one and a half one and a half why didn't you do a single piece um well you don't do a single piece because you want these holes to match precisely and Nobody is precise enough where they're going to get those holes to match exactly. And plus, it's easier just to machine two at once because you can set this on. It's got auto feed. You walk away for five minutes, come back, reset it. You can do other stuff in between. With just one piece, it's like when you're only going through half of this, you have to be back here twice as often to make it reset. And, you know, you lose a lot of time doing that. So might mm -hmm. as well machine two at once. Mm-hmm.
Excellent. Yeah, so I mean, I, I guess that was a bad question before. So one of each is one on each side of the machine, so that's why you need two plates. Yeah. Yeah. Ian, how does that sound to you? It sounds excellent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and a dead cat? Dead cat likes it too. <laughs>